It's 2025 and the tide's turning on climate change. To me, it looks like this will be the year when we'll stop trying to prevent it from happening and instead focus on adapting to it. Donald Trump is back in the White House and he means business. He's already pulled the United States out of the Paris Agreement again and announced he'll set an end to what he calls the Green New Scam and instead invest into roads, bridges and other infrastructure. And we will drill, baby, drill. Meanwhile, European are afraid to fall behind in international competition and global businesses are done pretending they care about carbon neutrality. Already last year in March, Shell abandoned its goal of reducing carbon emissions by 45%, citing uncertainty in the pace of change in the energy transition. In October, Reuters reported that BP abandoned its goal to cut oil output and, very tellingly, that BP shares were up 0.8%. The likely reason fossil fuel companies are abandoning climate goals is that they expect demand to increase. Many multinational companies, including Gucci, Nestle and EasyJet, have downgraded their ambitions to reduce carbon emissions. It's not hard to guess why. Carbon neutrality isn't helping their business. Fossil fuel is back in fashion and the financial sector is drawing consequences too. The clearest sign is that the Net Zero Banking Alliance is falling apart. That's a group of banks who committed to aligning their lending investment and capital markets activities with net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. In December, Goldman Sachs left the alliance, followed by Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo, Citigroup and JP Morgan. A recent report from ShareAction, a charity that supports responsible investments, found that decarbonization efforts by 18 large European banks, including HSBC and Barclays are behind target and I suspect that these banks will soon stop pretending they even care. On January 13th, the Net Zero Asset Managers Initiative, one of the world's biggest climate investor groups, announced that it's suspending activities because of, quote, recent developments in the US in different regulatory and client expectations, end quote. The trend away from carbon neutrality is obvious, but it's not just driven by financial incentives. Increasingly, it's driven by the race for artificial superintelligence. We've heard a lot about how energetically expensive AI training is, so much so that some guys in Silicon Valley have predicted they'll build a 100 gigawatt gas plant to power their superhuman intelligence. That'll take some time to become reality. But what's already happened last year is that Google's parent company Alphabet, which said since 2007 they want to be carbon neutral, ended its carbon neutrality program. The reason they quote is that the growth of the AI data centers has rapidly increased their carbon emissions. And I guess they figured now why bother even trying. Meta hasn't yet abandoned its goals, but reports say, not so surprisingly, they're struggling to reach their targets, and I suspect it won't be long until they officially give up. That Trump doesn't believe in climate change makes sense, because by the time things will start going to hell, he'll be dead. But he's reflecting the view of the people who voted for him. According to Pew Research, there are merely 12% of Republicans who think that dealing with climate change should be a top priority, while a whopping 84% think it's important to strengthen the economy. You might think that Trump's new buddy Elon Musk could help him see the light. Alas, Musk has declared that climate change risk is real, just much slower than alarmists claim. And that's true in the sense that if you're a billionaire, it'll take much longer until you feel the consequences. Musk has also voiced his support support for the German Alternative für Deutschland, AfD, a party which currently ranks second in polls for the federal election that's coming up at the end of February. The AfD wants to get out of all climate agreements and dig baby dig for coal. In its official 2025 party program, the AfD writes that climate change has always happened. The question of how large the human contribution is has not been scientifically settled. 
Yes, it's 2025 and we still have climate change deniers in the government. But it won't make a big difference either way. As we discussed in an earlier episode, most countries' net zero plans are empty words anyway. They're economically unachievable. It's only a matter of time until they'll be abandoned and no amount of suing by climate activists is going to do anything about this. Because there's no institution on this planet that could enforce a law against billions of people unable or just unwilling to change their lifestyle. Unless the super intelligent AIs take over. And I'm coming to think that maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Yes, so to be honest, I don't have a terrible lot of faith in our governments to get things right. But I do have faith that we can change things for the better if we do it together. It just takes a little bit of organization and planning like they do at Planet Wild. Planet Wild is a community-funded nature protection group. I joined them last year and it's been wonderful to see the community grow. Planet Wild goes on a new mission each month to restore ecosystems and change the world for the better. Whether it's planting trees, reintroducing animals to forests where they once thrived, or using drones to study blue whales, Planet Wild is making a real difference for nature preservation. And your money doesn't just disappear in a black hole. They document all their missions with videos on YouTube and on their app. You can sign up for Planet Wild conveniently on their app and contribute any monthly amount, big or small, anything that feels right to you. In one of their new missions, they travel to Vietnam to help pangolins, one of the world's most trafficked mammals that's at risk of vanishing forever. The Planet Wild team rescued, rehabilitated, and then released pangolins back into their natural habitat. And if you're among the first 200 people to sign up with my QR code, code or link, I'll pay your first month. And don't worry that you'll get stuck with them. You can cancel your membership at any time. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.